you know, any any commentary or any lexicon that one that's translated in the ESV sorcery, mm -hmm. pharmakia, we get the word pharmacy from that. And a lot of people make connections and some of it's anachronistic because it was used differently later. But clearly the first century religions were using uh, mind altering drugs as a part of their, uh, so, you know, certain groups as part of their worship. So those are the examples in the text of people using things that obviously are leading to, um, you know, an uninhibited kind of uh, behavior that ends up being immoral and a lot of other things. So, you know, I would say just as a principle, I'm going to try to avoid things that are going to alter my mood okay. and break down my ability to be uh, self-controlled. Welcome back to Bible Answers. We invite you to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel where we cover your Bible-related questions. Here's today's topic. Welcome back to Bible Answers with Pastor Mike, and we've got questions coming in to us, and these will be coming in more and more. What is the Christian's take on that? How should we view this sure. idea of using marijuana? Well, it seems almost just as well as legal in our state, because you can get it medically, and that, I understand, is easy mm -hmm. to do. But I guess, you know, before we talk about the use of marijuana itself, maybe we should just talk about the fact that when it is illegal, it's illegal, mm -hmm. right? In Romans 13, the Bible is very clear that I've got to obey the laws of the land unless they contradict something that would make me disobedient to Christ. So, right. you know, since, um, you know, it, it could be that Pop-Tarts are illegal. If they're illegal, then they're illegal, and I shouldn't take them even if they were fine to, to eat them. Mm -hmm. um, that may be a bad example, but you get the point. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, if you don't have a medical reason, right? Uh, then there'd be no question at all. And if it's outlawed in states, in certain states, there are no medical allowances, then it's wrong. It's sinful because it's uh, not in keeping with the laws of the land and you're supposed to obey the laws of the mm -hmm. land. So, you know, there's the first thing. Secondly, you know, I think we need to look at anything in our lives that is going to move me away from the stated purpose of the spirit in my life. Okay. Uh, in other words, the spirit in my life, I see the fruits of the spirit. I'm to be one who is in control of my faculties. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be self-controlled. And the problem with um, a lot of things that alter our moods and alter our minds is they move us in a direction that's even in that same list in Galatians 5 under the, the banner of the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And one of the ones that's often pointed out from, you know, any any commentary or any lexicon, that one that's translated in the ESV sorcery, mm -hmm. pharmakia, we get the word pharmacy from that. And a lot of people make connections and some of it's anachronistic because it was used differently later. But clearly the first century religions were using uh, mind altering drugs as a part of their, uh, so, you know, certain groups as part of their worship. So mm -hmm. those are the examples in the text of people using things that obviously are leading to, um, you know, an uninhibited kind of uh, behavior that ends up being immoral and a lot of other things. So, you know, I would say just as a principle, I'm going to try to avoid things that are going to alter my mood right. and break down my ability to be uh, self-controlled. Sure. That's the fruit of the spirit. Uh, and so, you know, that would be my first reaction. So anything, and there's a lot of things that are legal that could do that for me. Right. And I want to avoid those. Uh, so then things. would that go to Paul's an example in 1 Corinthians, where the Corinthians will throw out, well, all things are lawful. And then he'll say, well, they might be lawful, but are they profitable? Right. All things are lawful, but I will not be mastered by any. And I think right. that's kind of what you're talking about in the sense of the mind. And the first one is profitable. It's not profitable in terms of staying in control. Right. Uh, and is it uh, going to master me? Mm -hmm. I guess that's a debate you hear a lot in the media today. Sure. Marijuana is not as addictive as alcohol or whatever. But, you know, yeah, you've got to ask, is this something that's become a habitual practice that I am now given to? Mm -hmm. uh, and you could make the case, I suppose, I don't know, but that it's not addictive. But even if you did that, you'd still look at that first question. And is it profitable? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I think for the average Christian, it, you know, you're going to say it doesn't, it, it's going to be hard to make a case that it's profitable for your life. Sure. And then you could also think uh, the way that Paul goes, and I think it's Romans from 14 to 15, after talking about all those gray areas, in Romans 15, he says all this, you know, the stronger brother shouldn't do these things because he can't please himself because Christ didn't please himself. And so if our ultimate example is to be like Christ, it sounds like a lot of these arguments are being made by people who want to please themselves. Sure more than serve the other person. So now we've got to start to think about our, 
our brother in that sense. And there's an aspect of this, and I use Pop-Tarts as a silly example at the beginning, but if there was a stigma attached to Pop-Tarts, yeah, even if they point. were illegal, right. and even if it wasn't addictive, and even if you could say, I'm doing it in moderation, so I'm not becoming a right. you know fat pork or eating Pop-Tarts, right. you'd still say, if there's a stigma attached to it, I'm not loving my brother mm -hmm. uh, by doing this. And the thing I like to throw out in discussions on this is if you saw your pastor or pastors at the door of the church or on the patio of the church after the service doing these things, would there be any raised eyebrows? Right. And I'm thinking, uh, you know, if I'm smoking, uh, you know, marijuana at the door after the service, I'm thinking a lot of people are going to go, right. there's a problem with that yeah. because there's a cultural stigma to it. Mm -hmm. Even if you could say it's under control, it's not really altering my mood, it's not affecting my self-control, everything else is fine. Then I still got to say this has a kind of stigma that I think we, because we love our brother, we want to avoid things. Our freedoms are curtailed, even if it fit in the arena of freedoms, mm -hmm. my freedoms are curtailed because I I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Not only that, I love the testimony of Christ to the non-Christian, yeah. right? If my neighbors all know that I'm a pastor, obviously, and we'll share the gospel with them and invite them to church and everything else. You know, if I'm out on my porch smoking marijuana, sure. um, even non-Christians are going to go, it doesn't make sense. That doesn't add up. We right. didn't expect that Christians would do that. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people love to be rebellious in modern church saying, well, we need to teach them. We're just as cool as they are. We do. I, I just think that's nonsense. There's a lot of stigma still attached to a lot of things that Christians seem to have freedom for. Sure. And that's why intuitively they do it underground. Not many people are coming up to me at church, right? We have a big church, right? And 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 confessing joyfully and and, and boldly their marijuana use. Because right. there's still that stigma and it drives people to hide it. Sure. And I'm saying that's a point against use of marijuana just because there is that stigma right. attached and to it. And with that stigma, again, if we're called, maybe Paul's language in Ephesians 5, it's in the realm of sexual immorality and all those things. But if we're to walk as children of light in difference to the people of darkness, being more like them, I think what you're saying is not what we want to do. There should be that distinction between us. So not right. only with loving our brother, but a distinction to say, hey, our lives are marked by something different. And that, may, that has come under so much pressure for modern evangelicalism. But that idea of being separate, yeah. come out of them, my people, and be separate from them. Yeah. With Revelations and to the Corinthians, this was a statement made, 2 Corinthians 6, to the people. Yeah. That idea of being different from them mm -hmm. certainly applies to issues that are kind of the hallmarks of our morality. Yeah. You know, And that's why there's a lot of things I may be able Able to make a case reasonably that I have the freedom to participate in it, mm -hmm. but I, I'm, I'm to be marked out as different. Right. Now today, that'll that'll engender cries of, of hypocrisy and Pharisees right. and holier than thou. I just don't think you can get around it though in the Bible mm -hmm. that we are to be markedly different. And if there are certain stigmas attached to certain practices, they really shouldn't be a part of our lives because uh, we're called out to be a different kind of community than that. Not to mention, if we were really doing a dissertation on this, I think we could make the case that uh, marijuana in and of itself does not benefit my goals as a Christian in terms of the sure. virtues uh, that God has called me to practice and the pathway of self-control and all the other things that I think this this. Uh, works against, right. certainly mitigates my pursuit of, of holiness. And the call to the Christian life is often that of a warrior. What warrior wants to be relaxed and kind of chilled in a battle? No one wants to do that. Right. There's alertness and sober-mindedness. And that's all over the scripture, right? Yeah. Be alert, be be awake, be sober-minded. You're of the day, you're not of the night. So that's yeah, right. all these images I think would uh, mitigate against someone uh, who wants to say, well, we got freedom, let's just do this. Even when it becomes legal, which it seems like you said at the opening, like the it diet. is the trajectory of our culture, mm -hmm. probably will be legal, probably buy it at 7-Eleven one day. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would still say to my children and to myself, th these are things we should refrain from. They're not helpful, they're not profitable. And uh, so, you know, I would encourage people to uh, say no. Very good, very good. Well, thank you so much for the question. And again, we'd love to help you out with anything that you have questions on. Send them to us at askpastormike at compasschurch.org. We'd love to help you out.